music. First on BBC One, more wry observations on life as viewed by Kelly Monteith. <laughs> Tell I'm not serious about this. <laughs> First place, I'm not making any noise. I noticed that, see? The more serious you are about exercise, the more noise you make. Seems to be that way, because I've been in gyms and I've seen these guys that work out and make terrible noises. You know, I'm talking to guys that are really serious about it. The bodybuilders, you ever see those weightlifters? Guys who work on every muscle on their body. Even muscles on their face they work on. <laughs> they put their face in these horrible machines, make these god-awful sounds. <laughs> Hey. All right, look at those cheek muscles, huh? You want to talk definition? Now let's work on the lip. Put the wire there. <laughs> Tremendous noises. I'm not that serious about it. I just do it just for something to do and keeps me occupied in a hotel because there's not much to do in hotels. You know, people think hotel living is very glamorous and it's not. It's not at all. First place is detrimental to your social life. See, women do not like to go to hotel rooms. They do not, and I treat the hotel room as my home. I mean, if I didn't, I'd go stark raving crazy. So being a nice host, sometimes I'll invite a woman to my home for a drink. Doesn't always mean something's gonna happen. Oh, might be in the back of my mind, but you know. <laughs> I'm not one to force an issue. If it happens, it happens. But see, women, they don't like to come to hotel rooms. Because for one thing, you gotta walk through the hotel lobby, right? Now, if you walk a woman through a hotel lobby, people automatically assume the decision has been made. <laughs> Everybody assumes that. Guy behind the desk that gives me the key. <laughs> See the old porter behind the paper in the corner. <laughs> I always feel like I'm going on a mission for these guys. Damn, I better do good. I gotta report back tomorrow. <laughs> and then you get up to the room, see? And you open the door and there's the bed! Oh, man, just staring at you with these big pillow eyes. You know? <laughs> See if you're gonna take this woman and go. <sighs> I mean, it's just so blatant. At least at home, you got a sitting room, provide you with some sort of psychological foreplay. You know? But hotels, and then the walls are so thin anyway. They're so damn thin. It's just, it's very inhibiting. You know, I mean, even if something happens, people like to express themselves in various ways <laughs> in the heat of passion. And, God forbid I'm with a woman that's very vocal about her joy, you know. Woo! Woo! Wait till we get in the room. Then the guy next door is going crazy. Now I got off, I got kids in here. And they see us the next day in the lobby. That's the one, that's the one. That's the one. It's so easy to spot. I come down wearing old Levi's and sneakers and a sweatshirt, and a girl has on a cocktail dress, you see. <laughs> Having breakfast in the hotel dining room in a cocktail dress. Everything normal, doesn't everybody? <laughs> see, I forgot about that, being single. I forgot about, well, if you kind of fool around outside the house, you got to wear the same clothes home that you wore the night before. Nothing worse than going home at 7 in the morning in a dinner jacket. <laughs> there is something worse. Going home at seven in the morning in a dinner jacket on the bus. <laughs> I'll take a dinner jacket any time compared to what I had to wear home once, so. I was at this party, and I met this girl, and we really hit it off. You know, one of those things, you know how it happens, boom, all of a sudden, everything happens. And we ended up back at her hotel room, and the next morning, I had to get up, and I had to put on the same clothes that I had on the night before at the party, which was okay, except it happened to be a fancy dress party. And I had to walk into a busy hotel lobby dressed as a tomato. <laughs> That's where I left my car keys with a 
night porter. And he might have warned the day porter about this tomato that was driving the Ford Cortina. No such luck. Yes, very good, sir. Yes, goodbye. It isn't until 11.30, sir. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> uh, could I have my car keys, please? Room number? Uh, well, I don't have a room. Oh, of course you don't. You live in a grow bag, sir. <laughs> Tossing the salad, were we, perhaps? Or, or just getting stew? Something. I think that's him right over there. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, if an onion asks for me... Would you tell her that I went home? I drove home in mortal fear of getting a puncture, or even worse, being stopped by a cop. I there was somebody else who looked even more stupid than me. You know, I don't know which is worse. Long road trips or a tour of one-night stands like I'm on now. Now, when I do long trips, like three or four months, I can usually expect a lot of surprises when I go back to my flat. First thing I usually do is kill whatever's growing in the refrigerator. <laughs> then I go to the closet and open the doors and see nothing but empty hangers, but on the floor is a 300-pound moth. <laughs> labels laying around. One night stands, well, they're not as long usually, but they're much more grueling physically and mentally because I am bounced from town to town every night and I fly a lot, which I worry about. Not so much about flying, but about my luggage, you see. Because even though we can send a man to the moon, his luggage still ends up in Venezuela. <laughs> and if I'm doing one-nighters, if I lose a bag in the beginning, who knows if it's ever going to catch up with me, see? And I always warn the airline about that, but... Oh, it makes no difference. They pay no attention, because when they're checking your bag, they are always so confident. Our personnel are especially trained to use the utmost care and attention with every item of passengers' baggage. That's what they say out there. But we never know what goes on on the other side of that little hole. Right, over there or over here? Korea? On each way. I knew it. I knew it. You lost it. No, sir. We haven't lost it. We found it. Oh, great. Where? Korea. <laughs> Korea? How, how the hell did my bag get to Korea? Uh, on flight number BF-117. How could you do that? I mean, there's nothing in Britain that even sounds remotely like Korea. Ah, did you just say Manchester, sir? What? <laughs> I could have sworn you said Manchester. No, no, I said Korea. That's extraordinary. Do you know, to the untrained ear, with your accent, Korea sounds remarkably like Manchester. <laughs> what am I going to do? Have you thought of English lessons, sir? <laughs> no. Well, now, please don't worry. Even as we speak, our people in Korea are giving your bag VIP treatment to get it back to you by morning. <laughs> With you people. God, I'm losing my patience. Not to mention my underwear, my socks, my suits, and my shirt. Sir, calm down. It's all being taken care of. By tomorrow morning, your bag will be back here in Swaziland. <laughs> In God's name, did it get there? Frankly, sir, this one is a mystery. Do you have relatives in Swaziland? Do I sound as though I have relatives in Swaziland? Well, don't worry, sir. I'm sure your bag is safe and snug in the belly of a jumbo at this very moment. Well, we've got good news for you, sir. Don't tell me. You found my bag. Yes, we have. Oh. And just as soon as it clears customs, it's yours. Oh, that's great. Where's customs? New York. <laughs> New York? Just a couple hours ago, it was in Swaziland. Yes, I know. Isn't modern jet travel amazing? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's great. I mean, thanks to Concorde, you can be separated from your luggage at twice the speed of sound. <laughs> Sir, the American customs examination is a mere formality. Nothing to worry about. Yes, 
sir. This is your room. Yeah. Did you uh, fly up, sir? Yeah, how do you know? Oh, we can always tell the ones that fly. No luggage. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, this thanks. is it. Huh? Yeah. Uh, oh, this is the bathroom. Yeah. That's the tub. Uh, towel, soap, taps, plenty of hot water. And this is the loo, sanitised for your protection, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is nice to know. Thank you. Oh, and uh, over here, so this is the window. Opens up this way. And uh, by the way, uh, laundry and dry cleaning is normally done between 9 a.m. and 6, but for you, I oh, could... That's uh... OK. I'm only staying one night. Won't be necessary. Oh. Oh, that's a shame, sir. Yeah. But you can't stop and uh, see the sights. Well, what's to see around here? Well, there's Whittingall Farm. They've got a cow with six tits. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's in the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> well, what's it under? A uh, cow, six, or tits? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I think uh, everything's here, sir. Yeah, I, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Everything uh, all right, sir? Fine, thank you. <laughs> Anything you need at all, sir? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm just fine. <laughs> ah, my key. Thank you very much. I do need my key. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is the light switch. <laughs> There's a mirror over the wash basin, and this is the television set, sir. Oh, what's that? That's the carpet, that's the ceiling. Uh, <laughs> I bet those are the walls. Right. <laughs> and they're in tip-top condition, sir. <laughs> tip-top. When I say uh, tip-top, I mean tip-top. You know, makes you want to cheer. <laughs> tip tip right? Yes, 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 sir. I, I do get the message. You got change for uh, 10p? Sorry? <laughs> Just a little hotel humor. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, it. sir. Thank yes, you. You're welcome. And uh, if you need anything, just uh, tip the wink, sir. Okay. Right. <laughs> Tipping. That's a major industry in hotels, it really is. Which I don't mind. I mean, it doesn't bother me. Unless it's carried to extremes. And in places it is. Las Vegas. When I work Las Vegas, I feel like I'm tipping everybody for everything. People knock on my door. <laughs> yes, the sun's up. Thank you. Here's a dollar. <laughs> George, your show. Thank you. Here's the money. <laughs> Cab just hit your wife. Oh, no. What do you tip for something like that? <laughs> Hello. Uh, Mr. Monteith? Yes. I just wanted to let you know your suitcase is on its way. Oh, great. What is it, six hours from New York? Oh, well, I wouldn't know, sir. It's coming from Manila. <laughs> Yes, yeah, pretty clever of us to find it, eh? Yes, it's waiting for a connecting flight at Manila. Oh, no, really? That means it's going to end up in Calcutta or Rangoon. Uh, no, not a chance, sir. It's already been to Calcutta. And Rangoon. Now, don't you worry, sir. Your case will be with the hotel porter by the morning. <laughs> <laughs>